Um, my story is a little bit different than everybody around the table. Uh, I didn't grow up with a farm. I married the farmer's daughter. <laughs> so I kind of got that on the backside. Very smart. <laughs> All right, guys, so this is a little bit different. I'm in the house, right? I'm not filming any farming content, at least not the way that I used to film. And there's a reason why. So I haven't been able to say much, you know, had to go through a big process, but uh, today is definitely a day that I did never, I probably, no, nah, I never thought. Nope. Yeah, I never thought. Today is a day that something is going to happen that I never thought would happen. And that is today I get to meet with former President Trump. Now I know what you're thinking. What in the world could Nick from Rocky Acres Farmstead have to do with President Trump? And you're right in thinking that, right? Uh, but President Trump is actually coming to meet with a bunch of farmers in the area about how he can help on a number of different fronts, one of them being China buying farmland in, in the United States and in, in Pennsylvania. So then the second part of that is you're probably wondering, what does Nick have to do with any of that? And the answer is, I don't. But what I do have something that I'm a part of is working for the energy industry in the form of natural gas. Specifically, what my talking points are going to be about is how can the United States better partner with industry on producing cheap, affordable, reliable natural gas and what that means for the farmer. You know, in, uh, from where I come from, southwestern Pennsylvania, we sit atop <clears throat> two of the most prolific shale plays in the world. That's the Marcellus and the Utica Shales. Um, companies like the company that I work for partner with farms and landowners to lease that ground, drill the wells, and then also pay those farmers royalties for allowing us to, to drill wells on their property. So. You know, in, in Pennsylvania alone, we pay billions of dollars in revenue uh, to landowners for royalty payments. So that's what I'm going to be able to talk to Mr. Trump about today. And to say that I'm excited would be an understatement, right? Um, and that goes for both sides of the aisle, right? If, if the other uh, candidate wanted to meet and hear my perspective on natural gas development, I would sit and talk with them as well. But Mr. Trump's team did reach out, and I feel that it's my obligation to sit with the man and, and have a very good, heartfelt conversation about what natural gas can do for uh, not only our state, but also the country. So follow along today. Today is going to be crazy. I got to leave here in 15 minutes. I'm going to pick up a friend of mine who's going to be my plus one for the event. Um, and yeah. We're going to sit down with former President Trump and, and let him know what we think. Stick with us today. It's going to be an interesting day. Nick Stafiri is a hay, beef, and pork farmer from Fayette County. At this time, I'd like to introduce Nick Stafiri. Hello. Thank you, Mr. President, for having okay. me. And thanks for the opportunity to be here today. My name is Nick Stafiri, as they said. I'm from Lower Tyrone Township, Fayette County. My family owns a small 120-acre uh, farm where we specialize in freezer beef and hay. Um, my story is a little bit different than everybody around the table. Uh, I didn't grow up with a farm. I married the farmer's daughter. So I kind of got that on the backside. Very smart. <laughs> my mother-in-law was a full-time farmer in our operation. My father-in-law, myself, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, my wife, everybody else had a job off the farm. Um, <clears throat> from 1954 to 2015, we milked 50 cows a day, twice a day, no hired help. It was all on them. My mother-in-law decided to stop milking in 2015 and transition to freezer beef and hay. I'm gonna be a little bit different on my story here because my wife and I are both energy uh, workers. So <clears throat> with the energy transition in Pennsylvania, our focus 
and our ability to have uh, take our financial resources and put those back into the farm has been uh, tremendous. Without that energy job, we wouldn't have been able to better our farm and better our situation. Without my industry and my work family, the opportunities afforded to me, especially like this today, wouldn't be possible. And as you sit here today, you're sitting on top of the Marcellus and the Utica shales. Right. Some, some, the most prolific shale plays in the world are underneath your feet. Hmm. My family depends on my salary and my wife's salary. Um, and we, those salaries are dependent on American, pro-American, pro-energy policy. With uh, these, <clears throat> this pro-energy policy would allow operators to develop abundant clean natural gas from below our feet. Appalachia produces roughly 30 billion cubic feet of gas per day. We could double the amount if we were just given the opportunity. Common sense policies that allow for infrastructure to be built here, pipelines. We need more pipelines. Doubling our output would be the equivalent of putting 10 million barrels of energy on the market for the world stage. Providing opportunities for families to remain farming, because guess what? We pay those royalties. We pay billions of royalties a year to landowners, just like everybody that's around here at this table. Right. And, you know, due to the ups and downs, I want to tell you a little bit of a personal story of mine. Due to the ups and downs of the commodity-based business, four years ago I was faced with an ultimatum. And that ultimatum was, do I chase my corporate job or do I stay here and work on the family farm? My wife and I, we made the decision not to move to Texas. We made the decision that it was family first, that it was legacy over money. So our conscious decision to raise our two beautiful daughters as fourth generation on our farm is the best decision we made in our relatively young lives. There has been no greater honor than to represent my family, my industry, and the pivotal role we play together. The intersection between agriculture and industry, it's a tight knit one. We need the farmers just like they, they, they want us to provide the energy. And responsible natural gas development should not be a partisan issue. It's a common sense issue. So I want to thank you again for allowing me to speak with you today. It's been an honor and I really appreciate it. So thank you very much, Nick and Squay. So. So without your job, which is a good job, an energy job, but if you don't put Trump in, you're not going to have any energy jobs in here. They're not going to let you frack. They're not going to let you frack. You know that. She's never said frack in her life until just a short while ago when she realized her poll numbers were dying in Pennsylvania. They're not going to let you or anybody else frack. And so I just want you to be aware of that when you go and cast your vote. I'm not too worried about the people around this table, I must be honest. But you never know. But uh, everybody's aware of it. And I think Pennsylvania is aware of it based on polling that we're getting. Uh, you can't let them do it because that, I didn't realize you were uh, so dependent. Even a farmer would have to be dependent on the energy. But you take that energy out, you take that income out. It's a whole different story for Pennsylvania. Completely. And uh, yeah. we're not going to let that happen. We've got to win the election. Thank you very much. Great job. Thank you. American Initiative, thank you for being here. But thank you, most importantly, for seeing the threats to America, both militarily and economic. And we appreciate that. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. And Mr. Congressman, thank you very much. Great job you're doing. So I really didn't get to shoot an ending last, yesterday. It just got crazy with security and everything else that was going on. But yes, I did get to meet President Trump, got to shake his hand, got to tell my side of the story uh, when it comes to energy, cheap, reliable, abundant natural gas. Never mind. Like I said, once in a lifetime opportunity, super pumped about it, and uh, very grateful to be able to sit down with former president and explain my side of the side of the story so you know this channel is pretty much a apolitical but uh the opportunity to sit with a former president and tell that side of the story is something that i felt like i should share with everybody uh it's out there you guys can google it and uh yeah appreciate the support appreciate everything and uh we'll see you on the next one
See ya.